Hey, welcome to the My Inner Struggle podcast. We're talking everything personal growth, lifestyle, and business. I'm your host, Laura Ferry. I'm so glad that you're here. I just had to do that take like four times by myself, and that's a little weird, and I can laugh at myself. I'm so happy you're here. If you're new here, welcome. I hope that you get something out of this that is useful to you and your perspective. Um, If you've been here a while, I'm really glad that you're back. So this week, I really um, wanted to talk about ditching the mom guilt. And it's something that's prevalent in a lot of us. And no one really, you know, we'll kind of talk about it on the surface. um, But secretly, uh, it goes much deeper than that, without a doubt. And so I want to help you get over the mom guilt um, and start dreaming big. Stop apologizing. Stop um, making yourself smaller because that's not necessary. Um, You need to believe in yourself and the what if, and it's okay to want more. So that's kind of how my journey started um, quite a bit. And I wrote a blog about it uh, this week. If you go to myinnerstruggle.com and click on the latest blog, I always felt like I was made for more. And I think a lot of people feel that way, but they tend to bury that feeling deep down or, or judge themselves and think I should be fulfilled with what I have in front of me. But there's nothing wrong with wanting more in a healthy way, right? Um, so when you're thinking about these things, and as a mom, we put ourselves in the back burner all the time. And I'm a huge fan of finding something that you're passionate about and just digging into it. There's so much more to life than just being a mom or just going to work. We're not made to go to work every day until we die. This is your life that we're talking about. So what are those things that you're passionate about that you can start incorporating into your everyday life? Because this is what it's about, having as many happy and fulfilling as experiences as possible before we're gone. Life is too short. So if you think back and reflect on those thoughts that you've had, because I'm sure you've had one at some point or another, and thought, what if? What if? And to go further than that, I think the first thing that we'll think of automatically is like, well, what if it fails? I don't want somebody to see me fail. I don't want to be embarrassed. I don't want all of those things. But what if it was awesome? What if I pushed myself and I did it and I fucking did it and it was successful? So whether it's trying a new sport or um, a new craft or um, just using something of yourself, learning an instrument, learning a new language or starting a fucking business, what if, holy shit, what if? So there's a reason that you keep thinking about that thing over and over again. And it's a reason that it's stuck. It's kind of like your guidepost in, in all of that you're doing. I knew that I was meant for more. I didn't know exactly what it was, but people are truly my passion and I love helping people. I want someone to feel good about who they are and know how much potential they have and help them get there. <laughs> so follow it, see where it takes you. Even if you just start in this contemplation stage, even if, you know, the thought of taking a step in one direction is scary, just start thinking about it and visualizing it and see if it's something worth tapping into. We're all operating at a fraction of our potential. And especially us moms, we're so fucking smart. Do you know how many problems we solve on an average day? I have no idea. I don't have a statistic, but um, all day long, we're finding things, we're fixing things, we're resolving things, we're we're playing referee to our children, or we're um, you know facing deadlines at work, or um, organizing things, we're attending all of the things, we're, we're being a taxi, we're being a chef, we're being all of these things. And we are made for more than that. And that's why it's so important. I, I got to a point in my life where I realized I forgot 
who I was or did I even ever know who I was or what I like or, or any of it. And so this path that I've been on has been just mind blowing, quite honestly. When my mom passed away, it sort of triggered in me of this like foreign notion of like who, who Laura is. And after much personal growth, realizing that it's because I didn't really have the permission to be who I was. And her death was kind of a release um, for me to figure out who that person is. And all along, I had been a mom the whole time. So finding your passion um, could be easy and it could be a little difficult. Um, when I was getting divorced and I started dating, you know, one of the biggest things is like, well, what do you like to do for fun? And there's so many standard answers. And I'm like, I don't fucking know. Um, my therapist actually had told me at the time, she's like, I absolutely think that you should date because I think that'll help you discover yourself because people will ask you those questions. How often does someone in your everyday life now ask you what you like to do for fun? Probably not a whole lot. I mean, unless you're hanging out with those people frequently, you're probably doing the same things all the time. It isn't until you introduce someone else into your life that makes you question um, what I'm doing all the time. So it, it was an interesting process and I learned a lot about myself and I tried new things um, to figure out what was attractive to me and what wasn't. Um, and it's been a great fucking time, honestly, getting to know myself. <laughs> and I say that we're operating in a fracture, a fraction of our potential. It's not a criticism. It's encouragement because you have so much more in there and you are worth so much for a really long time. When I was married, I didn't really feel like I had anything to offer anyone in a conversation. And you know what? I don't fucking feel that way anymore. I, I focused on building my self-confidence and knowing that I do have something to offer and contribute to a conversation. Um, I don't know if uh, I, you know, I didn't graduate college. I didn't finish college. And it's something that's always in the back of my mind that I want to continue on to. And we'll probably be going down that venture again soon. But that was something that kind of held me back a little bit, meaning I, w I didn't have the book smarts to contribute to a conversation, but that's bullshit is really what it is. So what if, what if you thought about this goal or this more that you need in your life to feel happier and more fulfilled. Um, of course, our, our children bring us tons of joy, but it's also setting a good example for them to take time for yourself, to do the things that bring you joy, other things. And then when you come together, you all can talk about it. I um, was... I wasn't sure where this coaching journey would take me, quite honestly. And building this lifestyle and media company is really fucking cool. And because it's multifaceted and I, I am not one, I'm not a person that can do the same thing every single day. I need variety in my life and having these different assets or different avenues that I'm tackling within my business brings me so much joy because it's not the same shit every single day. And it brings just some light and new perspective. And then when you circle back to that other thing, um, it feels really good. So now I went off on a tangent and I interrupted myself and now I can't remember where I was going. But what if you stuck with that goal? What if you had this what a feeling that I, you know, I'm not fulfilled in my career. I really want to do something that I'm passionate about. And it is now, now is when we take that time to do that. We can't wait. Tomorrow isn't promised. So what if we stuck, what if, what if we tapped into that? What if, and tried something new and who cares if it doesn't work out? We fail forward more often than we, than we don't. And that's just an everyday life, right? So Ditching the mom guilt and feeling like you can put yourself first in certain avenues um, is something that we really need to work on. 
What if you believed in yourself the same way you do your kids? What if you talk to yourself in the mirror the same way do you do to your kids? You'd be pouring that right back into you. And it's so important that we do that. Now I remember what I was going to say. The, all these different avenues of my business that I'm that I'm working through, and I just launched a monthly subscription service for women to help build their confidence through community and connection. And that is called the Self Love Club. It's quite a magical um, place. Uh, I it was something that I was lacking uh, the support as I was going through my own personal growth journey and just having some accountability with other women that are kind of going through the same thing feels really good. And so it's brand new, just launched it. I have, um, quite a few people in there that are ready to make change. And we had our first live weekly call and I was kind of nervous about it. Honestly, um, anything new, uh, obviously I don't jump into it without feeling nervous. You know, I feel nervous. Um, but I had been texting my daughter beforehand and I was like, oh, I'm a little nervous. And I told her what was happening. And she's like, you got this mama. And my kids, now that they've gotten older, it's so fucking cool because they're giving it back to me. And that feels really good because they, you know, we lead by example, right? So when we're encouraging, um, our kids will be that way too. And we treat each other with kindness and respect. And that's super important. But I almost wanted to cry when I got that text back, quite honestly. Um, and she said, I'm so proud of you. And I don't know that any of my kids, well, Evelyn has told me that before, but my older two, I don't know, you know, they're basically adults at this point. They are, are, you know, they have a, an adult mindset really, and they're in it and they see it, even though they're still in school and, um, you know, go through jobs and stuff like that, but they see it. And so it felt really, really good. Um, so we want to start just considering that what if. So getting back to the what if and taking up too much space and uh, apologizing for taking up space. Um, why, why do we question that? What is our expectation for ourselves? Are we counting other people's opinions more than our own? Because it really only matters to us, not to other people. Obviously, you know, if you are married and you need to make a financial decision in order to start something new, then you need to be smart about it. But it doesn't mean that you shouldn't do it. It just means that maybe you don't jump in with both feet. Maybe you um, split your time and things like that. And we don't grow unless we get uncomfortable, right? So, Get comfortable with your own vision of what you want for yourself and let go of other people's expectations of what you should be doing because fuck them. It's not their life. It's yours. This is your story and you can do whatever makes you happy. It doesn't matter what it looks like to everybody else. If you love working and contributing and um, having something that is yours, don't let the other stay at home moms judge you for that. This is your story. And the people that are judging you are, um, let's, let's face it, they're, they're afraid to look in the mirror themselves. So no one should be judging you on what makes you happy uh, with what you're doing as far as your career and things like that. If you are um, supporting your family and doing good things, you're not hurting anyone, you're not stealing anything, then fucking do it. Follow your passion. How much more space do you think that you would create if you stopped feeling guilty about wanting more? Think about that. You want more. You're th it's on your mind. You're thinking about it every day. But how much more space would there be if you had, didn't really have to think about the, I want more, let me have more, or that, that um, thing that you're pouring into and it's making you happy. And then that leaks out into all of the other areas in your life. You know, um, we were born who we are, right? But over time, 
like our, you know, shiny newness gets, you know, dulled by what's around us, right? Someone, um, someone or people or events that change us, you know, like into who we are, uh, you, you ever walk in somewhere and you're really excited and you walk into, you know, like a meeting at, at the office or whatever, or, um, into like a party and you say something super positive and then someone says something to just like shoot you down or take the wind out of your sails. That sucks. And I'm a sensitive person. So that would happen to me quite frequently and it's unfortunate. And now I think I have a little bit better of a grasp on not taking other people's um, thoughts like that to heart. It's kind of weird. I'm a weird mix because I've always, I like marching to the beat of my own drum. I don't like doing what everyone else is doing. I like being different. Um, but when I'm trying to be positive and somebody like inserts whatever, or just basically trips you at the door, like that sucks. <laughs> but don't pay attention to that. We have to let that go because that has everything to do with them and nothing to do with you. We have the ability to cultivate more positive char characteristics uh, about ourselves at any point that we want to. So if there's some sort of positive change that you're seeking um, and you want to incorporate that, you cannot let those people that are surrounding you impact that. I have literally um, felt at that point of like isolation and that is where like, you know, you have yourself to rely on, but as you elevate your vibration, you will meet the people that you're really meant to, um, be with in this next step in this more positive place. And so that was really difficult. And I keep in continuing, like, um, there are family and friends that my relationships have changed tremendously, even in the last year, as I've been building my business it definitely changes the vibe um, because we're focused on different things. And even though they might be close to us and we can remain close, but we just, we definitely don't have the same exchange any longer. And it's weird to think about, um, but it is growth. And that's what happens when you're um, living your life for you. And I promise um, it works out good in the end because I started 2024 unsure of my path exactly, but I knew it was going to be abundant and I am surrounded with so much love and abundance right now. It's fucking incredible. And I didn't think I would be here in this spot in January. Definitely not. So I am truly letting go and living my life for me and what makes me happy. And it's fucking incredible. And so as a mom, you know, I have, I have three kids, so I, I get it. I understand there's a lot to balance. There's, there's a lot, um, that we're responsible for. If I, I don't even know how, I don't even know how I get it done some days, let alone someone else that has even more on their plate but we do somehow we just pull up the bootstraps and keep going. And it's incredible sometimes. I mean, today it's 6.30 at night right now. And I've been going, I was at a meeting at 7 a.m. So I've been going literally all day. And I wouldn't be able to do it without some help. And I didn't feel like I had help a year ago. And I... um just started asking, <laughs> you know, and you may say you might be a single mom and say, I don't have any family. I don't have anybody I can ask or whatever. Think outside the box. Think outside the box. You, you can ask. There is help around, whether it be a friend that you, you know, trade off back and forth the practices or something like that. But I, I just started asking for help. And then I had to be ready to receive that help the mom guilt, right? Because we don't want to take up too much space. We don't want to inconvenience anybody else. We want to just hold all the balls in the air so that we feel, or it appears that we have it all together. But you know, nine times out of 10, we all want to 
go ballistic, you know, when somebody's not listening or whatever, and then we feel bad. And then it's like, it's all this stuff. So when we slow down and we start asking for help and start putting ourselves first, we don't feel quite so angsty anymore. It's without a doubt. I've felt really overwhelmed lately. Things are exploding, which is really fucking cool. And I know that I, and I am asking for help because I'm looking for new employees to help me, but I wasn't really sure what to ask for. So I have felt overwhelmed lately and, um, I'm really grateful for the perspective of the people that I talk to about it just to kind of figure out what it is I need to ask for. Um, but there is, there is help. And, and there's always a way to figure out how to get to your goal. Like, I don't really believe in like the no, 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 that's too hard. It's too hard. You know, like what's choose your hard, you know, what's going through the rest of your life unfulfilled or wondering what if I had taken that leap? I really wanted to do that, but I didn't give myself the opportunity to do that. Now is the time to change. So um, a couple things, limiting beliefs about getting to that um, space, right? So this week in the self-love club, we were talking about morning routines and your morning really sets you up for the day. And we've done podcasts on it before. um, And I've definitely written about it uh, if you're following on Facebook or the blog, because your morning really sets the tone for the entire day. If I, I did kind of get into a weird space when I, when I launched my coaching business um, over a year ago that I would wake up and immediately dive in. And then you notice like it's nine, 10 o'clock and I'm still like in my pajamas and I haven't like, have I really even accomplished anything necessarily? Maybe I have, maybe I had some phone calls, maybe I did some networking, maybe I did some stuff, but lacking that morning routine and putting those things in place, I'm able to accomplish so much more now. My product, my, the level of productivity has increased tremendously. And it's because I'm more, a little more structured, um, especially with my morning. Um, and that was something that I had to do for myself because I wanted to get all of these things in. So when I talk about this, uh, with some other, you know, fellow moms, immediately, um, you know, when you say like, oh, get up an hour earlier and it's like, oh, but I can remember wanting to do that when my older kids were little, just because I wanted some, I needed to wake up. I couldn't, I couldn't just jump into it. So this is no different really. And, um, a lot of, you know, talking about that, um, people will immediately strike back and say, I'm not a morning person. In fact, when we talked about morning routines, um, in the podcast back in the winter time, uh, sort of when we first began, um, I said I wasn't a morning person, which isn't entirely true. I, I'm not a huge fan of early because I was perpetually a night owl for most of my adult life. And before that, even when I was a teenager and I, I like staying up late sometimes, but life changes and we change and we adapt and I need sleep. And so I go to bed earlier now and I wake up at 5 a.m. and I go through all those things. But if you're immediately thinking of this, like, I'm not a morning person, well, then no, that's a limiting belief. You can certainly become a morning person or maybe you have something that's not as early. But even if you wake up, whatever the time is now that you wake up, if you wake up one hour earlier, you can you can create so much magic in that hour if it's an hour earlier. So I get up at 5 a.m. and I have this whole routine. Um, And uh, between uh, writing, uh, journaling, um, reading something educational, whether it's an episode of uh, Psychology Today or uh, an episode of issue of psychology today or, or, um, you know, a motivational book or something about business, something that will 
continue my education, um, exercise and visualization and affirmations every single day. And that sounds like so much, but it doesn't have to be that long. You can, you can make that an hour. You can make that two hours. You can make it three hours if you want to, or you can make it half an hour. Even if you jump on the treadmill for 15 minutes and then you spend five minutes reading two minutes, you know, writing your thoughts and, you know, et cetera. So that is one of the things. I am not a morning person. Stop telling yourself you're not a morning person. Stop that automatic thought of whatever that is, is I am not. Let's not do that anymore. Remove that from your vocabulary. I am not enough. Says who? Who says you're not enough? Is that something that you're saying to yourself? Get rid of it. I'm not into personal development. That's kind of bullshit because we're always reading something. We're always doing something um, that's interesting and we're learning something. You just need to tap into whatever it is that you're interested in. Um, my kids would tell me like, I don't really like to read. And I'm like, what do you mean you don't like to read? What do you mean you don't like to read? And I am a firm believer that if you find, <laughs> to forget like, you know, Forget that a minute. Uh, but my teenagers, especially, um, my son will say like, well, I don't like to read, but he does like to read. You need to find a genre that appeals to you. That's all. And I said the same thing to my daughter. She's going away to college. And, um, you know, we shared a lot of the same interests um, as far as like psychology and things like that. And um, she loves thrillers and the psychology behind all of that. Well, she found this genre that she's like, this is exciting. They're suspenseful and I enjoy it. That's what I'm talking about. I don't even know why I went off on that tangent. But anyway, so another limiting belief, I don't have time. The truth is, is that we make time for the things that are important to us, period. We do. We make time to scroll through Facebook over... I don't know, getting something done or doing something for ourselves. We're scrolling through Facebook over reading something educational that would make us better people. So we absolutely have the time. You have the time. You have the time. You have the time. You're choosing not to make the time. So start making that choice. We make time for the things that are important to us. So make time for the right things that will make you a more fulfilled and happy person rather than, you know, scrolling through social media and being upset with your position of where you are or your life or your spouse or whatever, your financial status, start doing something with that desire. Are you afraid of failing? Are you afraid of what people will think? Is that a common occurrence? Um, I think, you know what, we're all, like I said before, we're all going to fail forward. So let them see you stumble and let them see the rise to get back up and keep going because that is truly authentic, humbling, and rewarding. That's for sure. So I mentioned being made for more, um, and not necessarily knowing what the more is. Um, my more is different than your more. I knew I wanted to help people. I knew that I wanted to be my own boss. I have many years of experience being that um, support person helping build small build business in many different businesses. And I have good knowledge of what goes on behind the scenes, you know, to make all of the things work together. Um, but I knew that I wanted, I wanted to be my own boss. I wanted to be the leader and empower people. And this feels really good. And especially as I'm, you know, hiring people and doing different things and managing projects and meeting people, it's, it's almost like one thing feeds the other. It feels really good doing these things. And then to empower the other people. It's like, it just feeds itself and it's really fucking cool. But that was my more. And that, and you know, I have other mores that I want. I, I have goals that I want to reach. 
I have people I'd like to meet one day. I have um, places that I'd like to go. That is my more. I want, I want a I want to continue living this beautiful life and meeting more beautiful people um, and kind souls and just good energy because that feels fucking amazing. The question is never, can I do it? I want you to remember this. The question is really, what am I willing to sacrifice to get there? It's not, can I do that? It's, What am I willing to sacrifice to get there? So (laughs) I've been talking about this book for a really fucking long time and um, probably a good six years, I'd say. I was a couple years in on blogging and I started just compiling notes and things that I wanted to um, write about and it's evolved through the years. And last year I spent a considerable amount, actually was it last year or was it this year, a considerable amount of time um, developing the book. And I had my last round of beta readers. It was probably four months ago. And I was like, I'm going to have this out by June. I'm going to have this out by August. But I was so stuck doing all of the other things, but I keep saying I'm writing a book, I'm writing a book and I can't sit, expect to sit down one day and just do it. Although I want to carve out like a weekend and, but you can't just turn it on either. I'm not a disciplined writer and that is something that I really need to work on because I'm always either super duper inspired or super, super stuck. And I don't know if that's normal (laughs) or not, but we can't expect to sit down and get this thing done in a day. It takes time and it takes consistency most of all. Um, I've been working with a finance client for a little while um, in my consulting business, and it's been really great. Uh, But going, you know, going to their office, um, it's been interesting, like driving out in the countryside or whatever. But I, for a good maybe week, I want to say, I kept passing this house And they had built this sort of like shed thing outside. And then she was painting it one day or a few days and painting it. And then she was decorating it the next day. And then however many days went by. So she worked on this thing for probably like a week and built this little stand, almost like a farm stand kind of thing, painted it and decorated it. And then for two days, she put a sign out by the road. It's kind of a busy road um, and sat out there with her, with her things out. And I thought about it. And then on the third day, she wasn't there anymore. And I was like, huh. So she did all of that and she gave it two days and maybe got discouraged. Now, I'm not, I'm not judging, but I'm making an observation by what I see. And it just made me start thinking about consistency. Like, it's not going to happen just like that. You're not going to get clients just like that. You're not going to sell your wares automatically. Sometimes that happens, but a lot of times you need to be consistent with your, with your marketing or the fact that, you know, she was out there a couple of days, um, you know, cars going by might be like, Oh, I'm going to stop this weekend and I'll check that out because I don't have time now. I have to get to the kids or whatever, but it just stopped. So who knows what happened? Who knows? Um, however, if you think about your own goal in that respect, you have to be willing to put in the time to be consistent. That's why it has to be sustainable, right? We can't uh, just dump everything that we're doing. We have to work it into our lives. So when you're thinking about that um, plan and taking action, then we want to uh, have something that is with like, that we can sustain for a little while which is where I am needing, you know, some people to help me because, um, I had, uh, Kayla has done an amazing job on my branding and my branded posts and she started her own business and I'm so fucking proud of her, but I really don't want to see her go, but she got me to a different level. And it was something that I, while she was doing that, I could be doing other things. And I wasn't the one only doing this stuff all the time. 
Um, and a shout out to Kayla because I love her truly. And she started her own photography business and it is taking off. And if you need a photographer, shoot me a message. Um, she is doing an amazing job and it was able to allow me that time to work on some other things and bring those forward, which was huge. And now I'm sort of manifesting this person or people to help me get to the next level while they're learning and I'm learning and we're all learning so much stuff. So goals take planning and planning, um, plan on being consistent, if anything else. And of course, I relate this back to like business and building a business because that is who comes to me a lot, um, is women in my de demographic, whether they're married or divorced, but they want a change and they know that they need to be fulfilled in some way. And a lot of them are wanting to start their own business. So that is, it's just sort of that time. And maybe it's, um, you know, we don't have the tiny babies that we did 10 years ago. So it's a lot easier to do now. So that is why I mention business or career. Um, but something that you can be consistent at if we, if we talk about, um, anything else, like any, anything else, literally like whether it's, you know, losing weight or eating healthy or, um, you know, starting your own business or, going to college or, you know, whatever it is, consistency is what does it period. You have to be able to devote time to that. And so then prioritizing things, um, over other things. So what are you willing to sacrifice in order to get to that goal? And I promise you it's worth it because this is what we've been dreaming about, right? So start planning to make the time. So I hope this was helpful in some regard, as far as letting go of the mom guilt, you are so fucking worthy of getting the things that you want and, uh, you know, reaching those goals and having the life that you want because life is too short. Tomorrow is not promised. So wouldn't you rather be chasing the life that you want than living the life that you have? necessarily. And I'm not saying any of it's bad. I'm just saying that we want to get to the point in our lives where, you know what, this is pretty awesome. I'm proud of myself. I accomplished a lot. I have a legacy. My children are watching me do it and actually succeed. And it's really fucking cool. So Thank you so much for watching uh, or listening wherever you're, <laughs> please hit subscribe wherever you're watching or listening. And if you are loving what you're seeing, please share it with a friend. That is a huge compliment and helps me a great deal. Be sure to check out the self-love club and join my online community to gain confidence through community and connection. Um, it's pretty amazing and I'm really, really excited about it. Um, Check out the blog where it all began at myinnerstruggle.com. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram and man, just ditch the mom guilt. I am thinking of you and sending you so much love and I will see you soon.